Welcome to The Shared Path. I'm Maggie Linton. Most everyone has heard about the devastation in Maui caused by a wildfire. Our next guest, Carl Powell, who lives in Maui, joins us for an update and to talk about his two new books, which promote happiness, recovery, and resilience. Carl is also an entrepreneur, wellness coach, and motivational speaker. So glad to have you join us again, Carl. Thank you. Maggie, always great to come and talk to you. This All is right, maybe but- not the best. This may not be the greatest, but it's it's an. I think it's an important conversation to have. Well, you know, I think it is the greatest because number one, you're there. You know what's yeah. going on. You know mm-hmm. the truth because we have heard so many different things. Talk about. I noticed when you came on, it was Maui strong, and I know that that continues to be the theme. But talk about mm-hmm. what's going on in Maui. Well, let's start about the fire itself. The fire was a natural disaster. It happened. At this particular moment, everyone is trying to find fault. Who did what? Who was wrong? Who was right? I'm going to repeat, it was a natural disaster. And in a natural disaster, nobody's right. Nobody's wrong. There's always a little bit of fault here, maybe a little bit there. Maybe this could have happened this way. But we can't live in coulda, shoulda, woulda. Because this is what this is what is presented in front of us. And so for Maui, the beautiful thing is I think that people are coming to what I call mindful presence, that they're just, this is where we are in this moment. Now, what do we do? So I love that the community really pulled together, that the entire country pulled together for us. I have a t-shirt that I've been selling on my website to support a friend of mine who lost her home. Many of my friends have lost their homes, lost everything, lost their businesses. It was a very devastating fire. Some of the saddest stories that I've ever heard. Uh, One little boy was home alone. His parents were working. He was just about to be 15. He was in the house with his dog, didn't know the fire was going on, didn't know what to do. Went in the room with his dog, cuddled up with his dog. Two days later, they find him. And his parents said they were grateful because his body was in one piece and they could identify him. And on that day, that's what they had to be grateful for. And that's what I call mindful presence. They didn't sit back and cry and wail. Of course they did. But when they were asked, they stay right in mindful presence and said, we are grateful for. And that's where we always have to stay because there's always going to be devastation and disaster. Our job, our job is to stay in mindful presence and say, this is what's happening right now. And I just have to figure out what do I do from here? No guilt, no blame, no shame. Still in somewhat of a recovery mode too, because there's Mm. still so many missing people who have not been identified and still looking through Mm. remains for that too. It was, it's just terrible. I, I try not to watch too many of the videos because I've been living on Maui 20 years back and forth and all up until three years ago, always lived in Lahaina. So Lahaina is very, very close to my heart. Uh, one of the craziest, saddest videos I saw is they went through and they showed all of the pets that they were finding. And there was a whole pile. I, I wish I could unsee that, but unfortunately I cannot unsee that. But it just shows how quick the fire moved. No one had time to do anything. They said that when the fire was moving, it was moving a mile a minute. So it just went through that town and just wiped out the entire town. So What a beautiful town, too, for those yeah. of us who have mm-hmm. traveled there and, mm-hmm. and eaten there and been right by the water. The water actually mm-hmm. turned out to save a lot of lives, too, though, didn't it? Yeah, because a lot of people, they had no other place to go. They jumped right in the ocean, and that's what saved them from the fire. But, yeah, what a beautiful place. Uh, Lahaina was the first capital of the state. And so a lot of historical buildings and monuments were in Lahaina that got burned. Uh, Churches that have been there forever. The banyan tree, which is a symbol of freedom and everything about Maui, got really, really damaged. We don't know if it's completely devastated, but we know it's damaged. Uh, We really appreciated that the president came and took his time out and Let's clarify, because we talked about this. Yes, we did. Let's let's talk about why the president waited 
for 13 days to come because he was asked not to come immediately because there was so much other stuff going on. If you've ever been here, you know that there's one road that goes in and out of Lahaina. So in order for the president to come through with his motorcade, he would have had to have blocked the entire road and stopped recovery efforts, stopped you know, people getting resources to the victims. So no, he didn't need to come here to, up until the time that he did show up because the time that he did show up, they had infrastructure. They knew what they were doing. They knew these people needed water. They knew these people needed food. This is where the devastation is. This is where we can walk. This is where we can't walk. Now the roads are open. So he came at a very good time for the island. Unfortunately, there's never going to be a good time for most people. You know, people are going to find criticism with either he didn't come at all, he came too early, he came too late. And like I said in the beginning, we can't live in coulda, woulda, shoulda. He came when he came, and that was the time that he showed up. I know I saw one of my friends online, and she was irritated because she went to get groceries, and she had to sit behind his motorcade and wait while she had to, you know, while he was there giving comfort and support to other people, she was complaining because she couldn't get to her mansion on the hill that was not destroyed, but wanted to talk about President Biden coming to see how screwed up everything is here. But your world is not screwed up. So no, you didn't need him to come and visit you. But the people who were in the trenches, the people who were there, people who lost family, who lost businesses and homes, they needed him to be there and he came, he did what he needed to do. And I think we need to honor and respect timing for everybody because not everyone's time is the same. Maybe some people needed him to come earlier, but the island didn't need him to come earlier. Maybe some people not needed him not to come at all, but there were a lot of victims that needed him to come to hear his words of comfort. So you can't please everyone ever, but mindful presence. That's what happened and it helped a lot of people Let's just vacillate on that. Talking about mindful pre presence, but also you want to talk about resilience, happiness, and recovery. And mm -hmm. your one book, The Seven Seeds of Happiness, is there mm -hmm. for young people all mm -hmm. the way through. It looks mm -hmm. like a children's book, but the words inside are good for mm -hmm. everyone any mm -hmm. age. So The Seven Seeds of Happiness, first of all, I dedicated it to my mother and my brother who recently passed, but it was really for my younger brother who was born a man, transitioned into a woman. His man's name was Tim. His woman's name was Tracy. So I called the little boy in the story, Tim Tracy. And I always knew that my brother's biggest uh, obstacle was trying to find happiness in who he was. So that's how I, the theme of the book started. But then all of a sudden, things started coming to me about growth. And of course, my business is called Grow With Carl. I'm always thinking about growth. So the story's about a little boy who can't find happiness. He walks around town, asks people, can't find it, looks down, finds an envelope. Inside the envelope, he finds seeds that he plants. And through those seeds, he finds happiness. The first seed is gratitude. And what he learns is, is that happiness begins by counting your blessings. So when you're looking for his happiness, the first thing he planted was gratitude. The next thing he planted is love. And it just goes in that order. As, as, he, as he plants the seven seeds, he builds a garden of happiness, love and appreciation. He builds, so he grows a positive mental attitude. And that's what we all need to grow. And that's what we all need to build. So I think the story is great for people of all ages because I think we all are about storytelling and how we share stories with others. And this may be a children's story, but it's a story that you can share with everyone, that whatever you put your attention to, whatever you put your focus on and whatever you give your love to will grow in your life. So if you choose to focus on the negative, that is what's gonna grow in your garden. And if you focus on the positive, your garden's going to grow and you're going to feel happy. So the book, it means a lot to me because it's the story of truly how I believe life is. Whatever you give your attention to, give, not pay, because 
I don't ever want to pay for anything. <laughs> I want to give my attention. Paying sounds way too hard. Whatever you give your attention to will grow in your life. So message for everybody there. It's true. Like, like I said, it's, and, and the sooner we learn it, which is why I guess you geared it toward younger people, but the sooner you learn it, because you aren't always mm -hmm. taught that at home. Yeah. A lot of times what's at home may be more negative and not the best positive look at life. And yet you get a book like that and it can change a life or many lives because you will then start attracting those same like-minded people to you. And we've talked about this before, but I've changed my perspective about being able to change the past. And part of, the, of this book teaches me what I want to teach everyone else is that your parents didn't have the tools. They didn't come equipped with the tools to raise children. They just didn't. They learned as they went. And when I was younger, I faulted my parents for not doing this and not teaching me possibility training. Why didn't someone teach me all the things that were possible? Because they didn't know. And you can't fault someone for something they didn't know. But when I was eight or nine or 10, I didn't know what my parents knew. I didn't know what struggle they lived through. I didn't know what my father's struggle was as a Black entrepreneur in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where Black people weren't supporting him, white people weren't supporting him. And he had a, he had inner struggles of his own. So he needed to read this book, too, because he needed to find a, play, a way to make himself happy. He drank instead. So when I was young, I faulted him for drinking, but no one taught him how to have a positive mental attitude either. So I think it's really important that if we start with our children and start teaching them a positive, then that will grow. My favorite word, grow. As they get older, they'll, they'll, that story will continue and it'll evolve and it'll grow. And people will start to, at a very young age, learn to develop a positive mental attitude. Right. Because as you think, so shall you go. Yeah, exactly. So shall you grow. <laughs> yeah. Dang. See, I worked it in there, didn't I? Yeah. All right. Let's see book number two. So book number two is called Tap Happy. I love this. And, you know, I love the yeah. tapping. Yeah. I just two weeks ago, I got certified as an emotional freedom technique practitioner. So I went through and I took the test and now I have a license to do it for people. I've been doing it in my meditation for years, yes, but I had right. never really pulled it in and identified how I can use it with people outside of the realm of fitness. So now I'm moving into more wellness. I learned it first because I was working with cancer patients. And with them, they have a lot of emotional baggage that they need to break through in order to heal. But don't we all? Don't we all? Yes. You know, we're all hurting somewhere. We're all needing. Uh, we all want to be loved and accepted. We're all striving. And, and it becomes a stress on our central nervous systems. So we always are in fight or flight. Right? What do I do? Well, where do I go? And tapping, what it does is it brings you down to, my favorite word for today, mindful presence. Just being here in this moment. Breathing, tapping on your meridians or like your acupressure points, and repeating to yourself positive affirmations. The tapping is a vibration therapy. So it start, you start to tap, you start to get that vibration, and then you start to feed in the affirmation. So the affirmation stays with you because you've tapped, tapped, tapped it in. When you stop tapping, you still feel the resonation of the vibration. And so you still hear in your mind the message. So it's right. tapping the message into your central nervous system so that when you need it later on, you can pull that feeling back up and utilize it to help you move through yeah. your day. Now it starts there, but you do it in other locations too to help in a sense, align the whole body with that calm that they need. Okay, so not because I, I wasn't expecting you to ask me, but I prepared something. <laughs> hey, you know me. Yeah, I know you. We've been friends a long time. I know you. So we're yes. just going to start with our feet flat on the earth. Mm -hmm. And you're going to place your right hand right over your chest. And you're going to touch your collarbones on top. So you're going to touch your collarbones. 
Please no. go ahead and relax your eyes. So you're just touching your collarbones on both sides. And we're just going to start breathing in and out, judgment-free. Just noticing your breath. Now, as you inhale, you really want to fill that hand with air as you inhale. Feel it move into your heart, into your lungs. And then go ahead, open your mouth, exhale, and just release that breath. A long, deep, judgment-free breath. The hand that is on our heart is gently begun to begin to tap our chest lightly. And we're breathing. Even though I may have negative thoughts, I choose to cultivate a positive mindset and create happiness in my life. Long deep breath. Even though I may have negative thoughts, negative feelings, I choose to ignore them and to cultivate a positive mindset. I want to be happy in my life. And then we're just going to pause our tapping hand and just notice how you feel. Long deep. Our eyes are going to softly open. And then we're just going to come out and rub the sides of our hands. To create a little heat. Our next tapping point is the karate chop. Four fingers of your left hand, side of your right hand. And we're going to gently begin to tap the karate chop. Tap the chop. So your fingers on the chop. Mm -hmm. And then go ahead and relax your eyes. And just breathe. I am the creator of my thoughts. I choose to focus on the positive and to stay optimistic. I am the creator of my thoughts. I choose to focus on positivity and optimism. Long deep breath. I'm just going to pause that tap. Breathe and just notice how you feel. And then our soft eyes are going to open. We're going to do two more. Peace sign with your right hand. And we're going to come right underneath our nose, right at upper lip, and just start to tap. So this is our filter. Although I may have negative thoughts, negative feelings, and sometimes those thoughts and feelings want to come out of my mouth in negative words, I choose to speak Positive words. I choose to speak of happiness. When a negative word comes into my mouth, I'll choose to change it with a positive one. I am the creator of my thoughts. I choose to be positive. Pause your tapping and just breathe. And then our soft eyes open. And we're just going to change our peace sign to the left. Come right underneath the lip. And start to tap on the chin. And these are the words that actually come out of my mouth. Today, I choose to speak positive words. To share positive stories. And positive feelings. I am the creator. Today I choose to create positivity and optimism. I choose to share it with others with my words. I know the value of words. Words can be daggers. Or words can be saviors. Today I choose to save people and save myself by speaking optimistically. And then we're just going to pause the tapping and breathe. Soft eyes open. We're going to touch all of our fingertips, all of our energy sources. Hands into your heart. Go one more time. Relax your eyes. Notice your breath. Long, deep breath. Notice the warmth 
in your hand. Chi energy. Chi energy. That's our life force. We've increased our life force with positive energy and emotion. Today I choose to always live, love, happy, positive, and share my optimism with the world. Stop, guys, open. I won't say namaste. The highest namaste. part of me salutes the, which means the highest part of me salutes and sees the highest part of you. Namaste. Namaste. And just notice how you feel. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, what I noticed almost right from the very beginning is everything I did made me relax a little bit more. You know, and breathe, be more conscious of my breathing. And in the technique, what people will do in general is we'll have a conversation and you'll tell me, these are the things that are going on with me today. So we start with the conversation. After you tell me the conversation, I ask you to check what your stress and anxiety level is around that. And you give it a number. 10 being the highest level of stress, zero being no stress. And then as we tap, we try to tap that number down. So let's say we go through a whole round of tapping and you say you went from eight to seven. Well, let's do it one more time. And you tap on each point 30 seconds to two minutes, depending on how much time you have and how much energy and angst you have. And as you tap, <laughs> you tap it away and then you go back and you check your number. I worked with people who number comes down drastically the first time. And I've worked with people who it took four or five rounds before they really started to see that number descend. But with all people that I've worked with, with the exception of one, I've had one person who said this doesn't work for me at all. I've had very positive experiences and I've seen people feel better when they walk out, which is always my goal. Because as a practitioner, a lot of times in people's lives, they never start and finish something. They start washing the clothes, they start washing the dishes, but when you come to your practitioner for exercise or mental wellness, you start and you finish. So that's, that's an accomplishment. So I wanna make sure that accomplishment is a positive accomplishment. You came in, you felt this way, we went through the arc, and when you leave me, you feel different. And so you started and you finished and you now have accomplished something in your day. A lot of people, that may be the only accomplishment they have, not everybody, but some people. So I really want to make sure that I treat that with kindness and love. And I am the creator of my thoughts. <laughs> and I want to share those creative and mindful thoughts with you. And if I can tap them in or love them in or however I have to do it, that is my, my goal in life new for me because I had to reevaluate myself after the pandemic, just like everybody else. Who am yeah. I? What do I do? But what came with that was 60. So right in the middle of the pandemic, I turned 60 and my life was different. The time, my time period was different. Now I'm on that last track of my life where I really want to create my legacy. I want to be able to have people have stories in their mouth to tell Carl said this, or Carl told me this long after I'm gone. And that's how I know I'll continue to live through my words and through what I've taught to other people. And that's the same for you and for everybody else. Your legacy is the stories that people will tell about you when you can't tell them yourself. So be very careful about the stories that you tell and be positive because everybody's hurting. We're all going through something. You're going through something. I'm going through something. The woman sitting next to me on the bus is going through something. And she might look bad and she might smell bad, but she's going through something. And it's not my place to judge her journey. I just have to stay focused on my own. And if I can make her journey a little bit nicer, by tossing her a smile, it didn't cost me nothing. But it meant the world to her. Know that you are the creator and you get to create positive energy around you or negative energy around you. If you always feel like you're walking down a trail of negativity, you brought all that stuff with you. Mm. <laughs> you brought that with you because wherever you are there, you know, wherever you go, there you are. So if you're carrying positive things with you when you're walking down the road 
flowers are coming off, rainbows are over your head, you're having a good time. Or you can live in that darkness with thunder and lightning and smoke and fire, <laughs> brimstone. If that's the path you choose, know that that was your choice because we all have the option and ability to pause, stop, get into mindful presence and decide how do I want to feel? How do I want to live? How do I want to live my legacy? And how do I want to share that and show up in the world? Plus, we can restart wherever we are. It may yeah, have been exactly. bad in the past. It can be different in the future if we just allow ourselves to go in that path. Yeah. And you can change the past. We talked about that by changing who you are right now. If I have a more positive mindset, I can look at my past with a much more positive spin than if I was sitting here looking at it with a negative. If I was looking back at my father's experience, I could be very negative and say, well, he drank and he did this. Or I can take it into a positive thing where this was a man struggling, trying to support three kids that he wasn't planning on having and doing the best that he could do. And that turns into a really positive story. So it's the story you tell yourself and they reflect in the story that people will tell about you when you don't have the, the life to tell it for yourself. Pearls of wisdom from you today. Thank you very oh. much. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I was going to ask you what you want to leave us with, but you've just left us with something to think about. <laughs> um, the one thing I do want to say, you said you do have a T-shirt up now for, to, as a fundraiser for Maui. Yes. Yeah, so if you go to my website, carlpowell.com, there is the T-shirt on the front page that you can buy the T-shirt. It's about $20. Whatever profit I make, I give directly to the person who lost their home. And also I have a plan to, use the books to go around the island and help kids with the children's book with the seven seeds of happiness. And I want to go on and help people tap the fire out because that's my, that's my, I think we need to tap the fire out. Now the fire is now gone. Let's tap it out of our mind, tap it out of our bodies and let's heal because until you tap it out, you can't heal. So I, I'm, I'm here. I really want to bring healing energy, not just to the island, but to everyone because I want healing and happiness to be my legacy. Oh, it is as far as I'm concerned and always will be. <laughs> so once again, many thanks to my friend, Carl Powell. Please visit his website, carlpowell.com for more on his many activities, his books, and also his fundraising t-shirt. That's carlpowell.com. Until next time, continue to seek peace and spread lots of love. Give it a tap, folks. I'm Maggie Linton. Oh.